おはようございます。はい。<sighs> I did mean to do this beforehand, actually. Ow! For those that have nipple piercings, how long did it take before yours stopped hurting? Mine took a good three and a half years at this point. They don't hurt anymore. But like sometimes, every once in a while, you, you, you pull it a little bit too much in the wrong direction because I still wear the barbells. I love those. Those are like, actually, I love everything about myself. So I can't really say those are like the best decision I've ever made. But like, definitely one of them. Can you even hear me? Hold on. Forgot to check that too. Anyway, um, do you please excuse the noise outside? There are unusually louder people today. Let's read. God is good. So, if you recall, um, in the last video that we made, we we read from the the phone, not in the book. Right. I also mentioned in one of my videos, I'm not entirely sure um, if it was a reading or not, I think I just kind of mentioned it, that we got this bookmark, which we are going to color and stuff. Can you like focus? On? Yeah, we're going to color it and do more stuff to it at some point, but um, it's really pretty. It's got this little tassel on it. I'm a sucker for tassels. I love tassels. I think they're cute. When they're done well. Um, and so we were keeping it in like the front of Pikachu because I've, I've also mentioned that I use Pikachu as like a, a pocket sometimes. It's very helpful in that way. And so I didn't want to bend it at all when I'm sleeping on it. Like when I'm sleeping on Pikachu. and um, And so we just kind of like haphazardly kind of just slipped it in our bible it was dark we didn't know what page was nothing and whatnot and we just slipped it in the bible on this page and the page i open up to is chapter 21 of uh first kings and we're we're done with chapter 22. So like the next page is going to be what we need to start reading in the second book of Kings, which is funny because we didn't read we didn't read those chapters from this book. So it was interesting for us to be on the right correct page even if it wasn't like exactly the correct page, it was exactly the correct page. I think that's so praise the Lord. And I knew it when I put the uh, when we put it in, because I was just like, when we take this out, make sure to read what page it is and like pay attention to whatever it is and whatnot. And it just simply was because of that, because we didn't even remember we said that until just now, because that's usually the intention of a lot of things that we do. Book divination is really cool to me, um, especially when it is the Bible. And, you know, like you ask the Lord for a question, like an answer or something and then whatnot. I think that's pretty cool. I think a lot of things are pretty cool. Moving on to the whole reason why we're here. Well, that's actually a, a lot of the reason why we're here. I guess in reality, none of my videos actually have subjects. We just have playlists so that we can put things in the more correct topic that happened during reading. And like, we came here to do this, but that's not really always what it's gonna be. But like, if that happens to be what it's going to be, then that is what it is. I can't wait to start speaking Japanese, cause then uh, I don't know if I'll be able to play with words the way that we do, because I know they can, but like, we were talking about that this morning. Um, and I was just thinking about how I don't even know how to say I like something but I know how to say a lot of things. I was like, the more words I learn, the more I realized there are words that I say simply every day that I cannot say yet, and I don't know how. Uh, and I use words, like I'm like a word acrobat, I feel. 
like not even on purpose it just kind of is what it is and then I'm just like but in other languages like it's kind of a handicap knowing English as my first language because in other languages they have like like you have to say the specific word in accordance to whatever specific subject you're saying certain things for like you know like you can't say i love something in spanish we'll use spanish as an example you can't use i love something um in a certain situation but like if you're saying i love someone i feel like that's different but that's also not the same thing because i don't really know spanish but like i do I do and I don't. I really don't. Like, the, the, the answer is I really don't, but I do. And I don't think that was a really good example, but it is, actually. There are certain, um, like, honorifics in different languages and stuff as well. And I'm just like, the English language is so natural to me that I'm able to do certain things. But, like, when I'm speaking about something... Sometimes I don't know what I'm about to say until it comes out of my mouth. I just know the intention of what it is that we were speaking, I'm sure. Even that's questionable. It usually is always good intention, so I'm always like, but that's not really the full intention of an intention. Like, it can be good intention, and then it'd be like, yeah, but, like, I just want them to understand what it is that I'm trying to say right now. Or I want them to understand what it is that they're saying to us right now. We want them to understand themselves. Maybe I'll be all right. But, like, I be telling y'all, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, certain words just be making sense. And, like, I can use one word to explain a lot of different situations, even though that word probably didn't mean that until we used it that way. And it was like, essentially, unless she used it that way. Like, <laughs> Moving on. <clears throat> um, where is that? All right. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick and he sent messengers and said unto them go inquire of Baal Zerub Zebub the god of Ekron whether I shall recover of this disease but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite arise go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Baalzebub, the God of Ekron? <clears throat> Interesting. Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back on unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the God of which thou art, oh, whoops, the god of Ekron. That's how unimportant that person is <laughs> in this book. I can't even stack on say his day. <sighs> I would also like to point out, not as important as compared to the Lord, and specifically, his role as also uh, mentioned by his name, the fact that Beelzebub and, um, what is the name, Beelzebub? You know what I'm trying to say, right? There's no, there's no coincidence that those are very similar in, in stature. 
of you know, and yeah, pretty much like in the stat, yeah, in the stature of the name. See what I mean? Like I'm just trying to throw words out there, and they make sense when they don't. That's probably not even you know what I mean. But yeah, I'm thinking of that like. The foundation of the name is basically the same as that situation. And so in this book, it really is just between the light and the dark. And since the light, the Lord, he's very abundant in the way that he is showing them. I was going to say us because it is true. Um, but specifically because I'm trying to draw the conclusion here in this book specifically. Um, he is the light and he is trying to tell people that I am the only light in this book. Now coming forward to now, he's made it more widely available for us to find the light, to find him specifically, which is why people in other religions, not Christianity, not just Christianity, I will also add, are finding God and they are telling us like they're, you know, they really understand who God is. And it is because we have evolved from this simple situation to more. And we all know where there is negative energy as opposed to light energy. Um, I'm not really going to get into that right now because they don't feel like getting into it right now. But so we're going to keep going. Um, let's see. Therefore... I went to sleep on time. I don't understand. Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of an hill. And he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of the fifty went up and came, to, and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baals about the God of Ekron, is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into 
heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha, Eli, that man, I don't know what happened there, Elisha from Gilgal hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Hold ye your peace. Mm, hold on. My brain said, yeah, because, duh. <laughs> but, like, I normally say yay because that's just normally what I would say when reading this, but at the same time, duh. But sometimes yay is actually spelled yay. And so I'm like, my brain kind of got stuck on it. Like, what, what if, what if it's not correct? Yeah, I know it. <laughs> We're done here. Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. Elijah said to him. Well, maybe that is how you say it, because honestly, I'm just slaughtering this poor boy's name. Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to, Jer came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that's so interesting. We knew what those words meant, but putting them together in a sentence like that is clever. Hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if, and nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind un into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets went, sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send, 
They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruse, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on him and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. Now Jehoram the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father, and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. Side message to actually be in the spirit of the Lord when you're going to do things for him. In Mesha, king of Moab was a sheep master and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and an hundred thousand rams with the wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. And King Jehoram went out of Samaria at the same time and numbered all Israel. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab hath rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, wherefore whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with valley. Yet that valley shall be filled with valley. 
Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink, both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And he shall smite every fenced city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as well as blood. And they said, This is blood, the kings are surely slain, and they have smitten one another, now therefore Moab to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites even in their country. And they beat down such cities, and on every good piece of land, cast every man his stone, and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water, and felled all the good trees, only in Kir Hirasheth. Kir Hareseth left they the stones thereof, howbeit the slingers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering un upon the wall and there was great indignation against israel and they departed from him and returned to their own land praise the lord we're going to do a prayer for that person that just came in because they were very um they were troubled but they were good like they were really good people we could really tell. And um, I think it was really interesting. Hold on, my ears are changing. Praise me. It was really interesting because um, most people don't know how to use the sink in here because one of the sinks is like the knob falls off. But all you got to do is push it like you got some sense and you'll be perfectly fine. But... Um, Grace is something that is coming to the world as a whole. That is how I'll say that sentence. Um, but like the other one works perfectly fine. But by nature, since we are somewhat closer to the second sink, depending on um, the vibration of the person or how like, it depends on what they're afraid of in their life. Like I said, we're meant to be a trigger. We're meant to trigger you in a lot of different ways. And those can be good or bad things. And so a lot of people won't use the second sink because it is closer to where I'm at because that's where the electrical outlet is. And honestly, there's a lot of space, but um, really a lot of people don't feel that way because when we had a lower vibration, we were very able to understand like how much space we thought we took up personally or um, we can notice when people don't have their own little bubble of understanding when something is too close to them you know when people be getting in your personal space and you're like like it is quite too close to your personal space like there's personal space and then there's like comfortable personal space and then there's like when someone is like in that energy and we're like why are you so close to me you got all this space so we know we, we know these things, right? And so this person, they were using the sink that was over there. When they came in, they said hello, but they kind of said hello in a way that is like foolishness, kind of just like, hello. Like, you know how some people just don't care if you say hello back or not, or they're just saying something to be acknowledged and stuff. And that's, you know, it is what it is. Um, 
but like they just came in to use the bathroom. It's not really that deep. And I'm reading the Bible. I'm recording. I'm busy. And so I didn't say anything to them. And so they went into the bathroom and um, started making some type of noise um, because something happened. But then they, they noticed that we were reading the Bible. And so they were silent and they started, I always notice when the energy of someone is listening to me or not. Um, and so then they come back out and use the sink on the left-hand side. I felt like she was just kind of drawn to that sink in general. I can always tell when someone's doing something for a certain reason um, as well. And so like she was just drawn to that sink. Sometimes I use that sink too, but I am more drawn towards the sink um, because of its energy. Sometimes the energy of the sink is like, don't use this one. And I'm like, okay. But one works better than the other in general, like water-wise as well. Like one's more of a, like a, a water trickle, but with intention. And then one is water, like it actually makes sense, but you won't know that unless you push the button. And, um, and so then the knob came off of the one that she was using and she dropped it into the sink and she was like, I'm sorry. And she was apologizing to us because we were clearly doing something, reading and, you know, being in our happy space, like doing something. And so like, I just smiled because I didn't want to engage in the energy because it's not her fault. And in general, people don't always apologize for anything that they do in this bathroom. Like people come in here, they slam the doors very rudely. Sometimes when you got to go, you got to go. Like I said, it's the bathroom. But like I said, I can pick up the energy of why people do things. I had a lady literally push the, uh, the hair dryer on her way out, just push it on the way out, just because she wanted to push it and do what she was doing. Because we were singing and recording and we were minding our own business and she felt triggered. She didn't like that. And she didn't like that. We didn't care that she was doing whatever she was doing. And that's what happened. Or some people they'll wash their hands and they will literally like shake their hands and knowing full well that the water is coming over here. And I don't always say anything about that because it's never been in a, a space where I'm just like, I need to say something yet. Because one, I am sitting near the sink. But like I said, there's enough space. And if every, like if 100% of water sprinkles made it on me, then I would know that this is a water sprinkle area, but it's really not. Um, like I said, there's an outlet right here. Um, and most people would drop like on the floor and then go to the uh, dryer or whatever or whatever people don't always use the dryer so that's actually not very true but it's like we can sense the intention of when that situation is happening but we don't always we don't ever really say anything about it sometimes it's like kids they don't know it they don't know that etiquette yet and that's perfectly fine too because like they're kids you got to read the situation situation by situation and so that person that went before all of this is definitely going to be blessed today because they did something completely different. They apologized for something that they didn't even have to apologize for, but the energy of it was completely like, I understand you're doing something and I apologize. Um, so that was that was a whole acknowledgement of that person you do something to get acknowledged and i happen to be there i'm gonna say something chances are i'm gonna say something and it depends on what what it is that i'm talking about but really i'm less likely to speak about things that i don't care for because really i don't like shedding light on all of the situations that people will naturally already do but like if i'm already upset about something or irritated about something and it happens to happen while you know while i'm speaking to you guys then then i'll say something about it and that also depends on the situation too like i don't like to talk about the trash that i see very often um in general, I don't like to talk about how I watch people don't wash their hands when they leave the bathroom just because they're afraid of the person sitting right here. But if they looked at me, they would see that I'm like the least scariest person that you could meet. But my energy is intimidating, so that's the opposite of the situation.
Praise the Lord. We got blessed today. <laughs> and we'll speak more about it afterwards. Um, yeah, I think I use that. But yeah, um, it is definitely something that you get blessed for by not speaking on all the bad things all the time. And you get blessed for not... <laughs> I don't even know how to accept my life right now. I'm accepting it as it's happening because it was very unexpected. Um, I don't like to be like, look, guys, but like, yeah, this lady just gave me five dollars. She was in the bathroom, she was listening to us talk. I try to whisper a little bit more when people come into the bathroom because I don't, I don't really like being heard by the people that are around me unless they're meant to hear it. So, yeah, live our life in the public eye. But like I said, I'm an introvert. Speaking out loud is a lot for me. But honestly, speaking out loud is not that hard. It's not hard at all. It just depends on, like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, y'all know what I'm talking about if you're that type of person, you know? Like, and some people don't care. And it's funny because I don't care, but, like, I care. That's kind of how things run in my life. Like, I care. <laughs> So we're gonna do a prayer, um, another one for the for us, pretty much. Not us, us, everybody, us as a whole. Um, and we'll just pretty much just be happy about God and I'm very grateful to be happy about him. Get out of here. Lord. I'm in a great mood right now. I like being able to buy my own food. I know that's something that like people are like, well, yeah, you got to have a job for that. But like, this is my job. And I don't like when people look down on it just because it's not something that they would choose to do. But primarily putting the Lord first is the only reason that I have to even be here. Um, even if I have other things that I want to do that, one, I could definitely say otherwise. Um, I believe I was always like this. I believe there was always a reason for me to feel like this. And it's just funny that now I'm allowed to be more like this. And the understanding of the situation really does irritate me because if I knew everything that I knew when I came to Earth like the first time, and I don't mean this one, I really don't mean this one. Like it happened, but not here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, if it, if I felt like if I had that wisdom, like all of it, like in full knowledge, I wonder how like I would run my world you know how things would be different you know i feel like a lot of the things that i have to go through in life is really because i don't i don't always know who it is that i am unless i do yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense because jesus we'll just use the name in general jesus when he came down here first time, and like I said, not here. It was, it was a different earth, but it was here. You know what I mean? Some people may not know what I mean, because some people may not like tune into that type of energy yet. Um, but it is definitely different universes. It's different worlds. This is not the only one. 
that's why there's so many theories as to how the world became. It's because all of these things happened. They just happened in different realities, different universes, different Earths, which is why this is my first time being, re well, I was gonna say reincarnated here, um, but in general, my first time being here, but it's not my first time living life. So, obviously. Um, but yeah, like if I knew that I was Jesus throughout this whole time, I really wonder how everything would have happened differently. And, you know, I really would have wondered like how I would have spoken to God a lot differently too, because I would have known from the beginning, I wouldn't have said um, that I was an atheist to begin with, um, you know? And the thing is, is that Atheism, the actual definition of it, because we were talking about this this morning too. Um, atheist, atheism, the definition of it is not believing in a higher power of any sort, you know, the good or the bad, right? But to me, um, because every definition has a definition, the more that it is given a reason to be a definition. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I say that I was an atheist, I say, I mean it in the way, I have to burp again. That was smaller than it felt like it was gonna be, like interfering with the speech. But um, atheism to me really was that I did not acknowledge the presence of the Lord because of what I didn't like, what I've heard of him. Because my thought process really was, is like if he doesn't love gay people, he doesn't love me. He doesn't love everyone that I like, you know? And I do mean like. I love people. I've learned, I love certain people. We were talking about that last night, too. <laughs> <clears throat> we're not getting into that part yet. That's a different story. It'll come up again, I'm sure. I'm very sure. Um, but atheism to me, I really just didn't acknowledge his presence. I didn't believe him because he didn't really believe us that's what i was feeling that was what my situation was and um the devil i didn't really care uh, about him like i really didn't like it really wasn't like like i used to be into like darker stuff like vampires and i'm still like into that stuff it's just from a different standpoint I don't like the, the fake edginess of situations. Like, you either are or you ain't. Like, I'm edgy. I don't try to be, I just am. And you, you know, and I'm in the light. So it's a lot different. Um, and not all vampires are like, like I said, like it has to be a good story. Cause like, I'm really understanding how, I'm understanding how vibration is everything. And I already knew that, but like even more so, now like i'm just seeing it in everything um but yeah i just didn't believe i didn't believe in him and and god and our father and and anyone that decided that they didn't want to be around us we didn't care because like that just meant that they weren't for us and you know if you want to be like everybody else you can go ahead and be like everybody else but i don't care it's not like I didn't want to be understood by him. It was really more of like a feeling of, I don't care what you have to say because I'm going to be who I am going to be. And if that makes me happy, that makes me happy. But I don't think that I had that type of um, explanation behind it, really, when I was younger. I think more of, it was more of like functioning in that way. And it really did work out for me because... I saw a bunch of people being like, oh, I go to church, but like now she's pregnant and she's 16. Which I'm not saying it's not a, you know. I have my ideas about young childbirth. I really do, I really do. Um, in general, I'm not really like against or for, that's not really my business. It's just the way that the people that end up having most of the time, we're not gonna put people in a box. Most of the time there's people that are in those types of situations 
and it's like with people that they shouldn't be with or it's in situations that they shouldn't be in and I'm like what is your home life like for you to feel like this is okay for you to be around and it was always it was Mexican girls I didn't hang out with black people I'm really just gonna be honest with you like I had maybe like two black friends in school and then after I got out of high school that's when I started meeting more um, colored people in my karate group, there was more black people, um, but like still Mexicans, and they were all baby kids, to be honest with you. Like they were, they were all ghetto kids, but they weren't all ghetto kids at the same time. Like once you're a part of the situation, it's really hard to say that. Like, well, actually, once you're a part of the situation, it's a lot easier to see it. Um, even if that means when you're not a part of the situation, it's also easy to see it. So it, it could go it could go either way, but they were all really good kids, even though um, they all had their quirks. We all had our quirks, and I just you know maybe was more mature because I wasn't me. Well, that's eh, well you know I'm still growing, but I was definitely me. But like I got forced to be there so by my mama, and my brother was like, "I'll do it if she does it," and my mama was like. Please. I like karate. I don't like sweating. I don't like physical education if it's not always fun for me. So now that I'm older, I'm glad that I feel that way. Especially because now I'm a lot more active in general. But I did not care for that. Um, but yeah, there was pretty much no reason for me to believe in God. I think that also, that's a part of my explanations um, to other people in general. There was no reason for me to believe in him because I didn't care. I didn't really care. And no, I had not experienced any type of form of happiness um, before I started talking to God. Like that, that did not, that emotion did not exist for me. Smiling did not really exist for me all of it was humor like if something was funny that's when i laughed and if something wasn't funny i didn't laugh and usually a lot of things are funny especially as a sagittarius but like i have like a darker humor so like sometimes jokes are just not funny but at the same time some jokes really do be getting me some, some and some of sometimes it'll be a bad joke and i'm like this is so funny it's hilarious because it's like I don't even know I don't even know um but yeah that was my explanation of being atheist in the past and not knowing that God really <laughs> had me wrapped around his finger and it was it was so that we were able to understand both sides the way that we wanted to understand both sides while we were here I'm pretty sure we already knew the situation but since we knew that we were gonna die in the first place, um, you know, emotionally that must have sucked. Like I, I just, I can just understand how that just sucked. But I think I was actually really happy about it because, like, really, it's really funny how many times like I've just wanted to say I want to leave, and then even in the Bible it clearly says that I said. How long do I have to deal with these people? Because they don't believe. And so I think that if I had known what I've known, I would have had to deal with a lot of more bullshit that I don't care for. Um, but I'm glad that the Lord gave me a, a wisdom tier higher than the rest so that I was able to not be in really bad, difficult situations. Um, but we, you know, dip our foot in it. And that makes sense as to why we've always had to dip our foot in situations instead of being like full blown a part of it. Like as soon as things get bad, God is like, okay, we're done here. You understand now. And I'm like, praise the Lord, because that, that was not for me. That was not for me. Another thing I will say is um, we had it and it's kind of, it's gone now. Praise the Lord, I don't know what I was gonna say. Um, but it had something to do with
we're having fun with that idea. We're having a lot of fun with whatever we're saying right now. I can definitely say that. I can't really tell you that I know anything else about anything that's happening right now, and that's also great. It's an interesting situation. Oh, no. I'm not trying too hard to figure it out, but the next mode is like loading. And I, I don't even want to say loading because it's like, it's not a mind blank. It's like an energy of messages that is like, what is next? Because the feeling of what I'm going through right now is really just wanting to speak about itself. It's not really saying anything. It just is. So, we are. That's another thing. I have a dad here in the real, like, you know what I'm trying to say. And, um, cause this world really isn't real to me. At the, not even at this point, really, but like, um, quite literally. If it was the real world, cause somebody said it yesterday. They're like, I, I live in the real world. I'm a real man and stuff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, we accident. Well, I wouldn't say we accidentally triggered somebody yesterday, but like I didn't expect it to happen like that. But he seems like the type that'll say something and come back about it. Like he was very testosterone. I called him a boy, and he said, "Man, everybody trips out about that." But I always say that, kid, boy, girl, woman. Sometimes it is what it is. I don't know. When I get the feeling of someone being a man, I do say something about it. But like, I guess people don't understand the energy of which it is that I see in order for us to be saying it. Because if I feel the word kid, I'm going to say kid. If I say boy, I'm going to say boy. But like, there have been times where someone has acted in the way of a man and I'm just like, that's a, that's a boy. And I don't even care, it's still the same thing for me. Like, I don't feel like it demotes people of any type of sort. Like, I am a child of the Lord, quite literally. Begotten son, child, boy, whatever. Like, still a girl, a kid. I'm 26, I'm still a kid. Okay, really, I'm not. I really feel like I'm really trying to do more um, in general in my life rather than what it is that we've already been doing because a good portion of our years here on earth have been definitely um, dedicated to this cause. And by this cause, I do mean like the past. I feel like this was the portion of the past, like what happened and everything. Like we've been off the grid for a long time and now we're finally coming back onto it but it was because we came back as who we are, not as who we were. And we weren't even technically on the grid, but like we were, you know? And um, so now with that understanding, we're able to come back in a different way, but it's just a lot different. And I feel like a grown ass woman. I feel like I need to go home. I feel like I need to go and do some things. Like I, I didn't get to have that uh, that stage of being not a partier because that's not really I don't really care about those things I'm able to enjoy the life that I want to enjoy because of the knowledge and the love that we have for ourselves and the Lord like for our life as well like we're very well put together um, so when people are like get your life together um, who are you talking to? 
My life is way more put together than anybody I know. Uh, praise the Lord. I try not to say that though, but this is my, this is my video. This is, this is what we are saying, but I, I don't choose to say these things. Um, I don't like to laugh at people because it's not their fault that they're not Jesus Christ. It's not their fault they don't know, you know, like, and people surprise you every day. So I just really don't like to feel that way about people, even though it's very true. I'm who everyone wants to be and not like, oh, I want to be just like you in that way. But like the, the qualities, the characteristics, the way we handle things, everybody wants to be like us. Because if that if those same characteristics and energy was in within themselves functioning the same way and it was them, their personalities, their way of life and those ways, their views and stuff like that, then they wouldn't feel unworthy of things. They wouldn't feel like they're still looking for things in life and, and whatnot. Like all of our worth, all of our wealth, all of our everything is on the inside and it shows on the outside, which is why we look the way we do, which is why people don't really see a lot happening for us around us, but they notice that we transform, we do things, we are always doing something, but they don't know that we're always doing something because our life literally is lived in the public, but everything we do that requires some type of movement really is behind the scenes and it's not even on purpose it just kind of happens like that like people are like i see you everywhere and i'm just like i ain't never seen you and or i will see somebody a lot and i'll be like i, I make a mental note that i see that person very often and all of a sudden i see them like they come to me and they say something because i don't speak to people unless they speak to me um unless like it's my role to say something and in general, I just want people to understand that when you see someone's spirit shining, you should really get it together yourself before you tell them. Somebody literally gave me a dollar and was just like, use this to get your life together. And I was like, my life is always, like, always together with the Lord. I was like, give this to me in grace, not out of pity, you know? And he still gave it to me because he understood. And now every morning he rides by on his bike because he can't get enough of actually looking at me. I just happened to be washing my feet at the um, at the the button pusher thing, but the foot bath. I'm gonna just call it that because I don't really know what it's called. But we just happened to be washing our feet that day. The Lord said, "Wash your feet," so I did it. <laughs> And so we weren't wearing our shoes, but our stuff was like right there. And like, you know, people don't always look at our situation and be like, she clearly takes care of her stuff. Like even right now I'm sitting on the bathroom floor, but I have a yoga mat out. I got my shoes side by side right next to each other. Also, look at these things. <laughs> I was walking to the Metro and um, my shoe was like, I'm a talk now. And I was like, for real? And so we tied these together on the train. And you know what? They got their own little pizzazz to them. I did a little Instagram thing. Been working hard. I forgot what I was putting in overtime. Um, but yeah, so my shoes are sitting side by side. I have food right next to me because like I was about to eat them. I got the Bible next to me. I myself am aesthetically pleased and I don't give a bit. And then my backpack is very nice, like in general. But even before that, like you can tell I take care of my stuff. I have my white t-shirt right here drying right next to me. And as you can see, it's white. You, like that's a big deal. Like it really is. The fact that I have my stuff with me and I'm just chilling in a comfortable fashion in my way, but like, you can tell that I care about my life and what it is that we choose to do. But the fact that people can't read energy or be a part of that world yet because they don't know how that wasn't taught to them. I am the sign. I'm the one that they should pay attention to. It's like one day people are going to be like, I, I, one, probably met that girl. But two, they would probably be like, I saw that girl. And they'll tell you what they were thinking when they saw me. One, they'll probably say, I thought she was beautiful, but I didn't want to say anything. 
because I was afraid. Or they'll admit their fears. They'll admit, like someone literally walked in the bathroom right now while I was telling you about um, that person giving me a dollar and turned right on back around and walked out. People do that very often. Like people are afraid and that's because of the vibration of whatever it is they're going through. And then they see us and it's like, they don't know what to do because they can't see us clearly. Like literally I walked in yesterday and this lady was waiting in line or waiting for someone that was in the bathroom. And she was an older lady. You could see the fear all over her face. She was scared. And she was staring at me so hard when I walked in. Literally I walked in and I like I was I had my backpack on like I'm cute I don't really know what to tell you like I am me like I'm always just gonna look like me like so if you actually see me like a lot of people that can actually see me do immediately they see me and they understand oh one I shouldn't fuck with this person and two this bitch is cute like that's another thing I'm cocky I don't even care like I deserve it at this point so then this, I walk in and this lady is already looking at the door when I come in and she looks scared of me. And at first I didn't really understand why she was looking at me like that. I was like, hello. Like I didn't really say anything else other than that and other than that tone of voice because I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to come and charge my phone, sit in the corner that you were standing close to. She was kind of standing close to it. Um, which is why I'm like, I don't think she was in line. I think she was waiting for someone. And I don't believe that she went into the bathroom after this. And so, like, I get closer to the spot. And she, like, like her face was, like, she got scared. And, like, looked like she was about to start doing some ninja stuff on me. But, like, jumped out of the way because she was afraid. Especially when then she saw that I didn't want nothing to do with her. I'm just walking to this space. I didn't say excuse me because she really wasn't in my way, but my energy scared the heck out of her. And the fact that she was already probably going through some things where she's being caused to like, she's, yeah, she's feeling the cause to be scared about certain things. Um, she, you know, projected that onto us and we knew, we felt it, like we felt it, but I didn't know that was the whole reason why she was staring at me like when I walked in. Cause you know, when someone walks through the door in the classroom, we all kind of look or whatever. But um, no, it was because we walked in as one of her biggest fears, I'm sure. And then after that, like the person she came with had no personal, had no personal uh, bubble. So she got in mine while I was still putting my stuff up and whatnot. And so she accidentally got crop dusted. I don't know if she knows that. I hope she don't know that because she didn't say anything. She just ended up being too close to me and I had just farted and washing her hands. She didn't have to do that though. She could have said something and I would have moved because I didn't even hear her come out of the bathroom. She just walked out. So yeah, act right and you don't get crop dusted. That's not the moral of the story, but I feel like people really should understand that. Like personal bubble. If I farted and you just happened to be right there, I couldn't do nothing for you. Like I said, I've been eating a lot healthier, like the healthier stuff in general. So it's smelling like it. It's pooping like it. All right. This video is over. <laughs> I have to pee. Yeah. Okay. Bye.